Hi, I'm Donna DeBerry, the creator of the One Stroke Painting Technique. It's blending, shading, and highlighting in one stroke. And I want to share with you what kind of brushes I use and why I use them. I've got the first brushes I want to share with you are the dark green handle brushes that are the bristles that I love and the type of brush I love. And I've created each one to go with the technique and I want to share with you why. This brush will paint on literally every surface. All right, the difference in the type of brushes that we have, sometimes I have brushes that will do different surfaces that just make it easier to paint. For instance, if it's a light green handle and a white bristle, it's going to be a softer bristle. And what that means is if you're on a non-porous surface, like metal, glass, ceramic, um, candles, anything non-porous, that it's not going to absorb paint. What's going to happen is that we're going to lay paint on there. If we're using our dark green handles as we're stroking, you have to com compromise the stroke and kind of lay the color on there if you want it to stay like on a mailbox. With this brush, as I'm stroking it on, I can put the, the whole entire stroke I'm doing and it still lays the paint on. Softer bristles, okay? And I have a, a one that's white bristles with dark green edges, tips on it, and those are for like fabric painting, something that's rough that, or, or that has fibers that you need to push the paint into, you might pick those up because they're stiffer. All right. Now, what I want to go back to is talk, talking to you about a flat brush. Now, the difference in my flat brushes and anybody else's flat brush that's out there, my bristles are thinner than a traditional flat brush because I need it to spring and I need it to hold just enough paint but not too much to still get my wiggle and move. This is the chisel edge of the brush. One stroke painting, we start and end every stroke up on the chisel of the brush. So I want a really nice chisel right here, this edge right here. And when we're doing our strokes and we're, we're pushing really hard and working on our stroke, we see our handles are always straight up and down, putting lots of pressure. See the bristles aren't up here. We're pushing really hard, doing our movement. But when I'm ready to release that pressure and slide to a tip, all I do is lift and see it springs. You want a brush that springs really nice like that, and then all I do is slide to the tip. So that's the magic of my brushes. Now flat's the brush I use the most. That's how I created my technique. I go from a number two flat to a number one flat. So you have all these sizes in between, and what you're going to do is depend on what surface you're painting on and size you're painting on depends on the brush you're going to use. So you can pick any design I do, shrink it and enlarge it, and use the brush size. I want you to use the largest brush comfortable to paint that stroke. All right? So I want you, if you think, oh, I'm comfortable with a 12, I want you to try to use a 16 because it's going to make a prettier stroke without heavy, fat ridges on the edge of the petals or whatever. Okay? Now let me show you how we load this flat brush. We're going to take this brush. It's been dampened. We lay it here after it's been dampened and take out the excess water. We're going to go right here and we're going to work it in and out, back and forth, I mean. All right? And if you just stopped right there, you could come over here and literally stroke a rose, all right? But it's going to really look like two separate colors. And remember, one stroke painting is blending, shading, and highlighting. I want to get all the shades. So if I come over here and then work it in into a spare compartment over here on my double loader, all right, and I'm pushing hard. This is what people don't do. Push really hard. I want the paint inside the bristles, not stroked on the outside edge. I don't want, I don't care if that looks pretty. I want it in the middle. So as you're putting pressure, you won't get a pretty stroke without putting pressure on the brush. And as you're doing pressure on this brush, it's going to spread the bristles if there's no paint inside to hold it together. So look what happens here. I'm going to come up and over. Now see already you can see the shading from there to there. Then I'm going to do a U. All right, and then I'm going to come here with the next layer. Now I can't see the white. I'm going to go dip just a little bit of white on one edge and I can stroke back here, chisel, chisel, chisel. So the difference in the two is how you load the brush. Now to clean this brush, we're going to come over to our basin. We have the double loader right here, your double loader, your palette, and your uh, brush basin are my three basic tools you need to have to be doing one stroke painting. It makes a world of difference. Now, 
See, hear that? These are synthetic nylon bristles, and this is a soft ridge plastic. So when we're raking across there, it's cleaning all the paint out of the ferrule. Now, the ferrule is the silver part of this brush. Now, what's going to happen, and the only thing that will destroy the chisel edge on this brush, besides a rough surface, is if we let the paint dry right in this edge right here of the chisel, of the ferrule. And so that is why you want to rake here to get that paint out. And what's going to happen when that happens, I'd like to tell you why. Just not, you can't do this, but I want to tell you why. If you let it dry in there, it fans out the chisel edge. And then literally, this brush is no good for stroking strokes anymore. You can base coat or do something else with it. But you want to keep that paint out of there. And we have a great brush cleaner, too, that's amazing that we'll get paint out, too. All right, but try not to leave your brushes unclean. Now, I want you to come back. I'm going to show you some more brushes when we get back. But isn't this fun? Come on back. I've got more to show you.